Unusual thefts from gardens. Loads on this. Emma in Cornwall says, My husband's leaky old rigger boots were stolen from our garden. They were returned a few weeks later, I guess, because the thief realised my husband has abnormally small feet. Makes dancing difficult, I should think. Scott Mills on his way after the news, and then it is Sarah Cox at four, and Joe Wiley at seven, and the brilliant folk show with Mark Ratcliffe at nine. It's a great day today, I'm ready to. Trevor Nelson's Rhythm Nation at ten, OJ Borge at midnight, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. This is Radio 2. On BBC Sounds. And on your smart speaker. Play BBC Radio 2. BBC News at two o'clock. This is Catherine Cracknell. A new wave of strikes has brought more than half of the country's train services to a halt. Members of the drivers' union, ASLEF, walked out this morning, leaving several operators unable to run any trains. Others have limited services in place. Another union, the RMT, is taking industrial action on Friday. Both have long-running disputes over pay and conditions. Ben King reports. Drivers at 15 train operators, including Avanti West Coast, Southern, Southeastern, Great Western and Northern, have all gone on strike today with many operators running no trains at all. Long-distance journeys to Scotland and Wales have been affected. The union has rejected a pay increase of 4% for this year and last year, dependent on changes to working practices, and has warned it is in this fight for the long haul. The Department for Transport said it had facilitated a fair and reasonable pay offer. BBC spoken to Ukrainian mothers who say they spent months trying to locate children who were forcibly removed from occupied parts of the country by Russian troops. Moscow says it took the children to safety. Our Eastern Europe correspondent Sarah Rainsford has been looking into what happened. There are many different and differing stories, but there is common threads too, and that includes the fact that we're talking in many cases about some of the most vulnerable children there could be, children from care homes and children from schools for, for children with special educational needs, so extremely distressed by the forced separation from their families. The SNP's met a deadline to submit audited accounts for its Westminster group. The party would have lost out on around £1.2 million of public money if it had failed to get the accounts in by today's deadline. The SNP had been left without an auditor for months after its previous firm quit last year. Peas, which don't taste like peas, are being developed by scientists as part of a government initiative to increase food production while reducing carbon emissions. Despite being high in protein, the vegetables aren't used in many meatless dishes because people don't like the taste. Paul Billings from Germinal says British-grown flavourless peas would reduce the need for imported soya. We all know we're facing a climate emergency. A lot of soya is produced in South America and a fair proportion of it is produced following rainforest deforestation and that obviously carries a big footprint. In rugby 